Welcome back to Dunkley. That's the federal seat. Frankston is where we are right now. And we are here. Oh, thank you very much. That's very nice. We're here at the Cheeky Squires. It's nice to get a little chant like that. I do appreciate it. We're here with uh, several of the candidates who will be putting themselves forward on Saturday in the by-election that is here. Of course, representing the Libs is uh, Nathan Conroy. Uh, we've got uh, Kristen Abram from the Libertarian Party and also Mackenzie Heath from the Australian Democrats. The uh, Labor Party and Greens chose not to be here. But thankfully, we've got uh, George. I think he's got a question now. Come on over, my friend. What do you got? Very grateful to be here, Paul. Thank you. Um, as both... Uh, potential federal member and a local voice for the six, uh, what is your perception on what some deem in the media is an out of control youth crisis occurring in various parts of our country? Uh, do you believe this is so or otherwise? Okay. Nathan. I grew up in social housing, George, knowing um, the most disengaged youth, um, good things and bad things. And what we need to do is we need to spend more money and proactive in, um, uh, initiatives and programs to make sure that our in disengaged youth are not targeted on the streets by crime gangs and organizations that have uh, prey on their vulnerabilities. But what we need to do as well is um, hold this state and federal government to account. They want to increase the age of criminality from 10 to 14. And all that's going to do is set a green light for these organized gangs to prey on our most vulnerable people in our community and that is our young. All right, Kristen. While I uh, don't identify as white or privileged, I definitely identify as the youth of today. And the reason I am standing for Dunkley is because my future um, is something that looks grim. And in terms of the, the future that I want for my children and for myself, I have to stand up and I have to make a change. So we are the first generation after World War II to have it worse than our parents. And why wouldn't the, the kids of today that don't want to be stuck in the rat race, that are constantly trying to keep a roof over their head and constantly trying to, you know, feed themselves and be stuck in this consistent circle of government price gouging, look at their, their options and go to crime? We need to make a better future. We need to make a, a more prosperous Australia. We need to ensure that the youth of today want to contribute to Australia by giving them the opportunities, because right now their opportunities are stifled. So, yes, I do believe that there is a youth crisis, um, and I have chosen to go down this path to fight for my future. Not everyone is given the same opportunity as me, and I'm out there fighting for them too. If you don't win the election, can you come back as a panellist on my show? <laughs> you're very good. You're very, you're very good. Uh, Mackenzie? So, I wonder how many people here have said the words, oh, where are their parents? You know, in, when you hear about these uh, crime sprees and the young people. Now, youth crime's nothing new, but we've been talking about a cost of living crisis. People are doing it tough. A lot of these people might come from single parent households, and there's a fair chance that parents working two jobs just to get by. So, as I said, youth crime's nothing new. Yes, we need to come up with new ways, as Nathan, I think, said, you know, around engaging these kids and providing positive uh, role models for them. Let's also understand this is a bit of a, a side effect of the current economic situation.